one family, four generations, and a remarkable history of growing cotton in Louisiana. I can remember as a child, if you wanted to make extra money, they were still picking some cotton by hand. And then they had little bitty cotton pickers. My father actually, of course, remembered it. when he came here, they had, still had mules. Jay Hardwick oversees this 9,000 acre farm. He is a legendary grower and an industry leader, but he was once an artist and professor. Jay got into farming when he met Mary and fell in love not only with her, but with growing cotton. It's got its challenges, its difficulties, its disappointments, but it also has all the joy and all the excitement that's part of the annual harvest, the, the planting. But I have never really thought of what I do as work. Uh, it's rewarding, but it also keeps me alive. We came here in 1981, and that, as you know, the 80s were really, really tough times. Jay loved it, and so he was just trying to find out any way that he could to uh, maximize yield, cut costs. He worked relentlessly. I think it might be a good relationship to pursue for at least next year. Jay and Mary still manage this farm, but the next generation is primed to take over. Their two sons, now in their 30s, are eager to continue the family tradition. They came to us and said, listen, we spent some time out in the, in the world. We want to come back to the farm and be part of something that was in our blood. Do we have any idea what this picking yield was? Close to 1,200 pounds. It's extremely gratifying to know that your sons, your children, want to be part of something that you've helped build. The younger Hardwicks have fully embraced the wonders of technology that have made farming far more efficient and environmentally friendly. Producing a commodity, you know, we have to be a low cost provider. So we need every tool uh, that we can to, to produce that crop at the lowest cost possible. So we place a, a lot of emphasis on technology and also we just, we like the technology. So this is the uh, generation of receiver that we use most on most of our equipment now. Uh, we have an accuracy with the satellite of about five to six inches. We're starting to upgrade to these newer models. These are accurate within just a few inches. We're able to operate at night. You know, this just past year, Marshall and I planted 24 hours a day because we were trying to beat the rain. So instead of needing five tractors, we, we do it with two. I feel like I'm in the process of, of an emerging vast revolution that's taken shape in terms of electronics, but the next level seems to me to be biology. Uh, my, my sons will be the recipients of that and the industry will be as well. No telling what that's gonna look like. The Hardwick dynasty now grows corn and other crops, but for them, cotton will always be king. There are not many people that get to say they're a fourth or fifth generation farmer uh, or cotton farmer. Cotton will um, hopefully continue to play a big, big part in our family's history. There's something about cotton. My dad loved it. My husband loves it. Yeah, cotton's pretty special. We're working and having fun at the same time. We're, we're riding around checking crops, but everyone's laughing and having a good time. So it's a great opportunity to live on the, on the farm, um, to work with your family. And, and hopefully going forward, you know, the next generation, which will be my nephews and nieces, maybe they'll have some interest in, in doing what we're doing. It's very exciting to think that a piece of property that my grandfather bought kind of on a whim has become such a part of our family and uh, now generations on down the line are making a living here and loving it and, and being a part of taking care of it um, for, the, you know, for the future. I would just like to be physically and mentally capable of um, enjoying what my sons are embarking upon doing and what they will discover. And then maybe possibly going back to cotton right here. To watch them go beyond us, go beyond our expectations and have their own and move that into a plateau of ownership of the farm and cotton production that, you know, I can't even conceive right now. <laughs>